Mosin, a quick uh, uh, final question. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute. You said at the uh, outset that at uh, a previous uh, talk here you had an epiphany about your work as mm. a result of a question. I sh I'm sure that your talk this evening was epiphanous for many of us. <laughs> Any breakthroughs again tonight? Well, I mean, you know, I don't know yet. The difference is none of you have read the book. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so that time what happened was somebody came and told me something about the book. Um, and, and it really made me think about my book differently. And, and so far, uh, I guess, you know, the book just came out two, three days ago. Maybe some of you have read it, but very few. Um, I'll tell you the story of what happened. Maybe I can do that. Yes. So, and if, if you're here, um, you know, please uh, raise your hand and... Uh, uh, or actually don't, just tell me afterwards. Uh, <laughs> correct my inaccuracies because it's much better the way I'm going to tell this story than what, how it actually happened. Um, so I was here and it was a Russian fundamentalist um, and I was signing books. Perhaps it was a paperback uh, because people had read it. Or maybe I'd come late in my book tour. And a young man waited till the very end. And he was, you know, he was a blonde guy with uh, you know, blonde dreadlocks and a pierced eyebrow and lugs in his ears. And he was holding, you know, he comes up to me and he waits for everybody to sign the book. And he says, you know, to me at the end, he says, dude, this book is about me. I was sort of looking at his, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it was the Rajan Fundamentalist and, uh, um, you know, which, which is a story of a Pakistani man working in New York <laughs> who grows a beard and moves back to Pakistan after the events of 9-11. And, uh, and I said, you know, how so? <laughs> and, uh, and, he said, and he said, well, you know, I went to this Ivy League school. I did two years in an investment bank in New York, and it just wasn't for me. And I dropped out, and I've become a yoga instructor here in D.C. And that's the first time I realized, you know, that he was, he was correct. It was the first time I realized that whatever I had imagined the Rutland Fundamentalist was, it really, at its heart, was a story of an idealistic liberal arts graduate who goes and works in the corporate world and is disillusioned by it. <laughs> and, and, you know, and of course that's what the book was. But, but I had thought so many other things that that basic, simple essence of it had eluded me till he said it. And, and, I, and I bring that up in part because, you know, this is when we say, oh, well, you know, the civilization or you're American or whatever. Um, if this guy, uh, who's not from Pakistan, maybe he's never even been to Pakistan, can imagine that this novel is about him, then our definition of, you know, what is me and what is him and what these cultures are is, is deeply, you know, suspect. And so he was a reminder when people ask me in Pakistan, how do Americans respond to your book? And I say, look, there's 300 million different Americans and each American responds differently to everything. And, and the same with Pakistan. There's 200 million different Pakistanis. They don't read the same way. You know, it's not sort of like the Pakistanis are, you know, the Mac operating system and Americans are <laughs> PC. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's uh, and, and this story uh, I like to tell just because it's a reminder that, you know, if the reluctant fundamentalist was about him, um, then any preconceptions that I might have had about, you know, who he was, uh, who I am, based on the groups we appear to belong to, um, those preconceptions really need to be uh, questioned. Thank you. Thank you.